Oh, that's the feeling. That's the feeling for a lot of y'all out there, man. Assalamu alaikum and peace. This is this is Bilal coming back at you. I know it's been a while. Like I said, I don't, I'm not doing this for fame or anything like that. I'm doing this when I feel inspired to speak about something. And I'm doing this because this is what I like doing. It's not going to be forced where I feel like I have to do it every single week to get views or whatever. It's just some sincere stuff from my heart. May Allah accept it from me. But like I was saying, oh, that feeling. You know, when you wake up and feel like you wish you were dead or you don't want to deal with life or you wish you could disappear. That's that uh, feeling I'm talking about that a lot of people out there have or that empty feeling in your heart, that heavy feeling. You're waking up with these feelings nine times out of 10 in general. It usually revolves around you not having a connection with Allah or even though even those who feel like they have a connection to God and you know, they say they're spiritual. And that, that's the thing with spiritual people always talking about they spiritual. To me, in my opinion, that just means you're dead. Your heart is dead. The spiritual path you're on leads to death or it leads the heart to death or it, it it's the death of the light of your heart. Depression, basically. And why do I say that? Because... I say that because your soul is called a soul when it's inside your body. That is what animates you and keeps you alive. When you're alive and awake and moving, it's called a soul. When you die or go to sleep, which they call the cousin of death, your soul leaves. And now it's called a spirit. When your soul is out of your body, it's called a spirit. So in my opinion, you saying you're spiritual tells me that you're really not woke. You're actually still asleep and you're dead inside. By connection to Allah, by connection to God, what I mean is with Tawheed. If you don't understand what Tawheed is, I suggest you do some research on that terminology. But. You have to have a proper connection to Allah in order for you not to feel any emptiness in your heart on a constant basis. It has to be the correct belief, which I'm talking about Tawheed. For example, it's people out here who think Allah just created the universe and and everything in it and just put it on autopilot. And, he, and Allah doesn't really care anymore else about what's going on. He just lets everybody else handle it. It's just on autopilot. This can lead to depression because you have the wrong beliefs about God. So this is what I'm referring to when I talk about Tawheed and having a proper connection to God and having a proper understanding of God with Tawheed. The other reason that you wake up or you feel it constantly depressed and have these heaviness in your heart is the major sins that you constantly do. Sins weigh you down. It, it pulls you to the ground. It's like it, it pulls you to the grave. It pulls you to the bed and wanting not to get out of the bed and wanting to be dead. And just I just I just want to lay down and not do nothing. It, it pulls you to depression because it's such a dark and heavy thing. Yes, sins are heavy. And in my opinion, both sins and righteousness, righteous good deeds are heavy. But one of them makes you stronger and more at peace in one's heart when you bear it. And the other one makes you weaker and more depressed as you bear it. For example, Allah says in the Quran in Surah 59 verse 21 that if he were to reveal this Quran on a mountain, you would see the mountain humble itself and split asunder from the fear of Allah. That's weight. That's that's heavy. That's heavy implications of these words and and meanings. Allah also says in chapter 33, verse 72, that he offered the trust to the heavens and the earth and they declined to bear it. But man said they would bear it. And 
in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir on this verse, it is reported that Ibn Abbas said, Al-Amana, which is the trust, means obedience. This was offered to them before it was offered to Adam, and they could not bear it. Then Allah said to Adam, I have offered the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, and they could not bear it. Will you take it on? Adam asked, O oh Lord, what does it involve? Allah said, If you do good, you will be rewarded. And if you do evil, you will be punished. So here we are again. The evil deeds we do, even sometimes when Allah pardons us, we still have to bear the weight of that sin on us. Even if nobody finds out or none of that, if you're a righteous person, you still have to bear that sin and that weight upon you for a time. So Adam took the trust and bore it. And this is what is referred to in the ayah, in the verse. So again, that is weight. But it is a weight that when you bear it and you follow it correctly, when you do it the righteous way and you bear it, it strengthens you and makes you happy and at peace. Even another example with the prophet. Uh, before I even go into the example about the prophet, like for instance, a good weight, for instance, if you're in the gym and you're lifting weights, when you bear that weight and you pushing it up, sometimes, yes, it's a struggle. But once you leave the gym and that dopamine starts flowing, you feel great. You feel good that you went to the gym and you bore that weight. Once you constantly keep doing it, your body gets stronger. It's a weight that makes you stronger. It doesn't make you depressed. It makes you happy when you work out. This is what I'm referring to about how righteous good deeds are a weight, but they're a good weight. And even another example with the prophet, peace, be, peace and blessings be upon him. There are many narrations that when he would have verses revealed to him and he would be, you know, reclining on one of his companions or have his hand on their shoulder or something like that. When verses would be revealed at times, he would become extremely heavy. And the companions would say like to the point that his hand would be so heavy on my on my thigh or my knee that I could feel the weight of it. And again, this is weight, but this is a good weight. So on the other hand, on the other hand, you have the weight of sins, which is a bad weight. And in an authentic narration, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said that verily the believer views his sins as if he were sitting under a mountain fearing it will fall upon him and the wicked views his sins as if they were a fly passing over his nose so again there's that weight again you're afraid that this mountain is going to fall on your head all that weight <clears throat> and you may say well yeah but the second part of this narration he talks about how the wicked person looks at it as a fly that's light well well i would put it to you that I understand this as that the wicked person doesn't give the proper weight or proper due to the sins they commit. Similar to how Allah says of the hypocrites in the Quran in chapter 22, verse 74, Allah says that they have not estimated with Allah his rightful estimate. So in the same fashion, the wicked person doesn't estimate their sins with the rightful estimate. Because even though they see their sins as just a small little fly, the actual weight of it is indeed like that of a mountain when their soul has to constantly bear it. And this isn't a bearing that if you constantly do it, it's going to make you feel better. No, it's a, it's a weight that if you constantly do it, it's going to pull you closer and closer to darkness and closer and closer to depression. And then they wonder why, even though they don't believe in Allah or they, they'll tell you, well, I don't even believe in the concept of sins. They wonder why they're still carrying around a dark cloud and feeling hella depressed and got anger issues and lashing out, having feelings of suicide and wanting to die because their soul hates, their, their soul hates being in their body for having to bear all of this weight that they're doing to it. You're, you're being unjust to me. That's what the soul is saying to you. You're being unjust to me by constantly putting this weight upon me. I want out. I want out of this body. 
And so Allah says in the Quran that those who turn away from his remembrance will live a depressed life. And you'll have Muslims who almost say, that's not true. But if they were to be honest to you or even be totally honest within themselves, you see that they have major sins that they do every day. Or they're not making all of their salah regularly. Or they don't have proper understanding of Allah, which is Tawheed. And, and let's say they have all of those things, though. And then they still try to deny, man, that's not true. I'm, that's not why I'm feeling bad. Then then probably the other sin that they have, the major sin that they have is arrogance. Now, this doesn't mean that if, you, if you're depressed, you may have a medical condition. So I'm not going to totally, you know, uh, disregard that. But most of the time, when you're constantly feeling depressed, it's because of these things that I'm mentioning. And when you try to lie to yourself and say, man, that's not what it is. I pray every day. Then now I see what the problem is. It's your arrogance. And that's what's weighing them down. Or it's some other hidden sin in the heart that they don't want to be honest with themselves about. Or they haven't really delved into themselves and figured it out. You have to delve within yourself and be totally honest within yourself. Even if you're going to lie to everybody outside of you, you have to look inside of yourself and say, this is what's wrong with me. And you cannot lie to yourself or it's just going to keep you. You're never going to get out of the depressed state because you're lying to yourself. So there's no way you're, you're not doing major sins constantly. You have proper Tawheed. Uh, make all your salah, you make constant dhikr. There's no way you're going to be doing all of these things, but you're constantly depressed. No, you may have sad times here and there, but you're not going to always feel sad, heavy, and empty if you're doing the proper things. So it's something else going on within yourself that's causing this. Or maybe you, be, you may be just going through a trauma in your life at the time and you're just feeling sad about it. But you have to be honest within yourself again to see which one is which. And this is where dhikr comes in handy. And I learned this from Sheikh Imran Hussein. And some people really don't agree with everything he says. But on the point he made about dhikr, I, I definitely agree with that. From my own experience, I definitely agree with that. It was a video I was watching of him. And he was breaking down uh, chapter 24, verse 35 in the Quran, the verses of light. And he was saying how this verse, you should go read it yourself, and I'm not going to uh, you know, recite the verse here, but he was saying how this verse refers to the heart. And he mentioned how dhikr is what polishes your heart. It's what polishes the glass in the verse that uh, I mentioned. And it's what keeps your heart burning brightly, basically. And he mentioned that dhikr, when done constantly, and dhikr is the remembrance of Allah, saying subhanAllah, saying la ilaha illallah, saying I stop for Allah over and over, these type of things. And he mentioned that dhikr, when done constantly, it will polish your heart and it will reveal to you sins that you still need to work on. Because the more you polish and polish and polish, you're like, oh, okay, that's where, that's where I'm going wrong at. And you're going to burn brighter because of it. And I noticed this is true within myself. When I... When I make it a point to make lots of dhikr, I'll end up having a dream about a sin that I struggle with. And the dream, it'll either be coded and I'll understand it when I wake up. Like, oh, okay, I understand what that means. Or it'll just be blatant. And when I wake up, I understand what it is. So yes, you have to constantly polish and clean your heart so that even though hidden sins within yourself that you think you don't have, but for some reason, you're still feeling that depressed feeling. You need that dhikr because you want those sins to be brought forth to your attention so you can work to overcome them. Like, and people say, well, I'm a Christian and I live righteously. I don't do no major sin, but I'm still feeling depressed. Well, <clears throat> that's another thing. You have to follow Islam. Because now, even though you may be a Christian, you have the major sin of shirk upon you associating partners with Allah by saying Allah has a son by saying uh, Jesus died on the cross 
and that's what's taking over place for your sins. So your sins was put on somebody else. Wrong belief. By saying, oh, well, Jesus was the last prophet and there's no prophets that come after him and the prophet Muhammad is a false prophet. Saying things like that, false beliefs. That's gonna, those are major sins that are hanging over you. So you can't escape it. And, you know, ending this, the only thing in life that gives you tranquility, the only thing in life that gives you peace in your heart is submitting to Allah and staying away from major sins. That's the only thing. You can talk all the crap you want. You can talk about how much money you getting, how many women or dudes you getting. You can talk about the drugs you do, the parties you go to, all of that. All of that is just temporary highs trying to replace what you really should be doing and that is submitting to Allah and Islam. All, that's all it is because all those things will give you temporary highs and then drop you down low when, when you're done with them. And you're going to have to constantly keep chasing them to constantly feel that high. And that's going to make your soul exhausted. So regardless, even if you keep constantly catching these things and constantly having these highs, your soul is going to be exhausted. So you're still going to end up depressed. Submitting to Allah and staying away from major sins, that's what gives you self-contentment. There's no agitation constantly in your heart. You know that you are free and clear. You know that if I die right now, there's nothing really bad that can be said about me. It, there's no evil someone could bring up and tarnish my name. No one can expose me for anything of how I did them wrong or stole something from them or did bad business or whatever. That is what gives you peace in your heart. Everything else, like I said, is just a temporary high. And when you are in this mode of constantly staying away from sins, submitting to Allah, constantly making dhikr, it will take away your fear of death. It doesn't mean you won't have a natural fear of death, you know, because death is something, even though we have all these hadith that tell us what happens after we die, it's still something of the unseen and we haven't experienced it. So you still have a natural fear of death. But the more that you become a righteous person, the more that this fear will go away from you. You won't be scared to the point where you are a coward. You won't be afraid to the point where you can't make a move when something happens. I mean, look at the companions. Look at somebody like Khalid Ibn Walid. He would just go fierce head on into battle. He was at the front of battles, getting scarred up. He would go at the front of battles every single time and would not be scared of nothing. Just go hard. You know why? Because he lived a righteous life with Tawheed and submitted to Allah. And he stayed away from major sins constantly. So he was he wanted to meet his Lord. He was ready to run into battle and fight for the sake of God. Fight for the sake of Allah because he knows I'm ready to meet my God. Because I know that I'm going to come to him free and clear. That's amazing. And the amazing thing is he died. He didn't even die in battle. He went through many, many, many battles. He got scarred up, slashed up, hit with bows and arrows and all kind of stuff. But he died on his bed from, from being sick. And he was so upset about that. And one of the things he said was that, may the eyes of cowards never rest. He said, here I am. One of the greatest warriors laying in my bed about to die in my bed. I used to run to the middle of the battles every time and here I am about to die in my bed. He basically saying there's no excuse for anybody out there to be a coward because being a coward won't save you from death because I wasn't a coward and I was running into the middle of battles seeking death and I still didn't die. But now I'm laying here in my bed and I'm about to die in my bed. So he said, may the eyes of cowards never rest. But you're only going to reach that if you living free and clear, if you're submitting to Allah with Tawheed, if you're staying away from major sins, and if you're constantly making dhikr, that's the only way you're going to reach that level of, of point in your life. But thank you for listening. I just wanted to give something to y'all. I got a few more uh, videos coming, inshallah. Thank you for listening. This is Bilal of Black Muslim in America. I'll be back at y'all soon, inshallah. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to make dua for me.
and uh, peace. Assalamu alaikum.